the Lake Michigan Angler Podcast. Push on, guys, right here. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the Lake Michigan Angler Podcast. I'm Rob, and this is Michael, and today we are here with well-accomplished tournament fisherman Jim Stepp, also known as Jaws On, and now a charter captain. Getting close. I almost got my paperwork back. Yep. Yep. Oh, just now? Really? I'm just, uh, well, I submitted all the paperwork. We're just waiting for it to show back up now. Wow. Welcome, Jim. I, um, we first met last year when um, we were invited onto the Do Jigger to kind of record the tournament experience. And, and that experience, that video actually was really, really, really well received. People were really interested because it's, it's a side of the, of the salmon fishing um, um, kind of ecosystem that doesn't get a lot of like publicity, it seems like, at least in my experience. And so we, we shot that and, you know, you see the intensity um, me personally, what was really interesting, interesting to see was the, the, everything was so tight knit, right? Like they had this whole operation down. Jim was setting the line, uh, Dave's captaining, uh, and, and you pull a fish and just as one fish is coming off, they're already grabbing. One guy takes the rod and sets it, this whole orchestrated machine, which was really impressive to see and all of that. But before we even talk about that right now, uh, share with us your, your your story in fishing and how you got into it and when you began and uh, your journey. Well, I grew up in Waukegan and uh, I started when I was five years old. My dad had a 16 foot uh, tin boat and we started fishing out there. And I, you know, I still remember the days, a lot of things you remember, a lot of things you don't, but things do get pregnant in your head, you do remember. And I remember back in the days when we were five, six, seven years old, our dad would drag us out there and, uh, and we would hold our rods because we didn't have rod holders back then. And I remember using red and white daredevils going around Alcatraz, which is that little <laughs> island that's gone now, but uh, and down there catching cohos and just having a blast by doing that. But I've been on Lake Michigan for 55 years. I've never took a year off of Lake Michigan fishing. Wow. I love fishing out there. Uh, the fishery is just unbelievable, especially these days. Uh, you remember we used to catch, we go out and catch five in a day. That was like, oh, my God, you had the best day of your life. Now if you go out and catch five, you kind of what happened. You know, <laughs> back in the day, it was a little tougher than it is today, for sure. Well, yeah, um, your experience with that, comparing the fishery now to, um, I think before we've said in, in conversations with other guests, like the the heyday of when when it was people kind of relived the old experience was what in the eighties, was it? Yeah, kind of that. You era? know, I think back then the fish were there. We just didn't know how to catch them like mm -hmm. we do today. Social media. Uh, going to the tournaments, going to club meetings, talking to other anglers. You know, before, the only time you didn't get any information whatsoever was at the boat launch. You know, so today there's many more access points to get that information to go out there and actually put more fish in the boat. The fish were there back then. We just didn't know what the heck, how to, do, how to catch them back then. That's actually a great point. I, I didn't think about that. You're right. Had back then, if we had the access to information oh, that there's now yeah. you guys probably would have been pulling absolutely 20 yeah. fish limits and you know absolutely just the conversations that guys have now about fishing are so much different than they were 15 years ago people didn't talk about current or anything they didn't care what their leader lengths were they just went out and dragged lures you know yeah, we pulled out of the harbor set up and went fishing we didn't know oh fish are out in 80 feet or 120 feet or 400 feet you mm -hmm. know? we just sat up on the middle of the, we most of the time we set our lures up in the harbor and just started trolling out from there and nobody ever took off from there how did how did uh to your recollection in in that time frame how did guys put together patterns then because if if you didn't have that kind of information which <laughs> they didn't know what patterns was, were. was it just yeah, a patterns. free for all it ain't like what we are our elaborate tail bo tackle boxes we have today right you know back then like i said it was red and white dirt devils uh, all kinds of spoon plugs stuff like that is what we always used back then but that's what caught fish you know that's really interesting fast forward to now um what how do you feel the fishery's been fishing in the last five years ten years or so i think the fishing not only the you know the dnr obviously everybody's complained complains complains about the dnr not doing their job properly if they weren't doing their job properly we wouldn't go out and put these big baskets together quality fish the amount of fish the amount of bait that we see in the lake you know obviously they're doing something right out there yeah yeah it's been going well, mm -hmm. going well. Excited for this year to start. Um, and, and speaking of this year, you know, my first experience with you was on the tournament side. And and, and as Rob mentioned, um, you know, you've been doing, not only have you been fishing this, but you've been in the tournament scene 
very heavily for all your career, correct? Yeah, about, I would say, probably around 15 years ago, I felt that I was a very accomplished fisherman. We were coming back to the boat launch uh, with, you know, great, great coolers of fish, and we're looking around saying, hey, you got two fish, we got 30. I felt that I was really getting to be an accomplished fisherman. And uh, quick story was they had a SU Open. Uh, Sam Olivia, Illinois has a tournament every year in, uh, in uh, August. They call it the SU Open. And it's open to all fishermen. You don't have to be a club member to be in that tournament. And uh, we had a good bite going on. I'm like, guys, I had two friends of mine. I said, you want to fish this tournament? Yeah, let's go up there. So we took the boat. We launched out in Winter Harbor, and we went out there. And there was a lot of boats. You know, back 15 years ago, it was nothing to see 40 boats in a tournament, on a regular tournament, you know. Obviously, we lost a little uh, boats these days. But hopefully, we got some new guys stopping up this year. Hopefully, they'll uh, get some more boats going. Mm -hmm. We went out to third place, first tournament I ever fished in, and I thought we just, you know, rocked the world. And I love competition. Uh, quick background, I've been drag, I drag raced motorcycles all over the country. Um, so I was heavily into competition. When I decided to finally get off the bike, uh, my back was getting bad, worse and worse and worse through the years. I needed that competition, and I started tournament fishing, and I absolutely love it. I fish, you know, 15 to 20 tournaments a year, not only Lake Michigan, we do some walleye things too. Nice. Um, so I do a lot of tournament fishing. I love the competition. I love the pre-fishing for it. I love the camaraderie about it. I love learning about it because when you're in these tournaments and you go to the, to the weigh-ins and stuff, you learn so much information from these guys. 90% of all these guys will tell you everything that they did that day. If you ask, just go up and talk to them. You know, they, they will spill their guts. We're all headstrong about it, and we all want to talk about our day. You know, so. Yeah, yeah. There's a certain there's a certain element of of, of ego, and that, which is not Absolutely. it's not unwarranted. You know, you you yeah. you, you put some together well, and you're right. Just from being at some of the SU um, weigh-ins that we live streamed here on on Lake Michigan Anglers uh, Facebook page, uh, which we're going to resume as a couple throughout the year as well. Um, in that setting, guys are, like you said, they're really open yeah. more than they would on like Facebook or yeah, social media. So it is, it does behoove you to, you know, uh, pick their brains there because it's easier to talk in person. And it's after the tournament. Yeah. So, you know, coming up to the tournament, trying to get that information out of people is pretty tough. Um, you really have to do your own work. Work, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. but after that tournament's over, the cooler has been weighed and boy, I mean, the stuff just gets spilled out. Dodger combinations, fly <laughs> combinations, spoon combinations. Well, why did I know that three hours ago? It might have helped me out. Yeah. You know. Yeah. But guys will really start talking about it after that tournament. And that's when you want to be there at the weigh-ins. You know, even though you go to these tournaments and you might have bombed out, don't go home. Go to the weigh-in. Listen. Be part of it. For sure. Um, an interesting part of what you said, I kind of want to circle back on, was that point in which – you felt like you were ready to go into into this into this side of the fishing, right? Yeah. Um, um, and I think that there's probably a lot of folks out there that are wondering. Um, and I think it's normal to maybe have some self doubt, and you know, man, can I really perform? Can I really do it? I think people put a self pressure, like if I'm going to enter in this tournament, I really got to do well and and all this. So, yeah. f I guess the question here is. Um, What's that point in which someone uh, should take that step? You, For you, you said that you just realized that you were doing really well, putting boxes together. And if you're like, okay, I think this is a point now. I should take the next I step. Start, yeah. So, yeah, what, what would you say for folks they should look at to take that step? Well, you know, it starts off with having a little bit of a team. And not saying, I got, hey, you got to commit to every tournament and stuff like that. It started about having a couple of good guys with you that want to fish as hard as you do. You know, going out and having pretzels at 10 o'clock in the morning or getting your salmon dip out at 9 o'clock and not changing lures or, you know. If you're that kind of guy that goes out there and literally wants to fish, tournaments are definitely your way of being a much, much, much better angler than you could ever imagine yourself being. That's a good, that's a good one. Mm -hmm. Elevate yourself. Because then, yeah, you take that and then you apply it to your, yeah. to your, your, your regular fishing, recreational fishing, and, and you improve everything. Um so can we talk about some of the tournaments that, that you've won? Because I think it's it's right that, I, I mean, and not to make you feel weird about talking about your accomplishments, <laughs> but it, I, I mean, you've done some some really good I've things. I've been pretty fortunate. You know, I've won every tournament on this side of the lake between uh, Waukegan and uh, Milwaukee. 
except Bruce City. I came in second place in Bruce City, and I took a third place in Bruce City, but I have never won Bruce City. But I have won the Pass the Passion tournament that we've had. I've won the amateur side of the Morris tournament. I never fished the pro side, only because I didn't have enough team, a good, you know. There's another thing, too. If you feel like you do not have a good enough team to fish the pro side of these tournaments, fish the amateur side. A lot of things are happening in the tournaments these days where we're starting to go back to maybe a five fish instead of having ten fish. A lot of guys can go out and put five nice fish together, you know. So you're starting to see a lot of that uh, going on. But I've won a lot of tournaments. Uh, I was boat of the year three times here in uh, uh, Sam and the Limit, Illinois. I've been on, then I got out of, off my own boat and I started fishing with other people. First year we was on time off, we won, the, we were boat of the year. Then I jumped off a time off and I went on do jigger and we were boat of the year on team do jigger. So <laughs> I have been, I've been lucky enough to be in the boat of the year thing around six times. Um, if you don't know what boat of the year is, it's a series of tournaments. At the end of the year, they crown the, the winner of all the series. Um, that's one thing SU Illinois has. Really, really a good a good foundation to start fishing these tournaments for, um, I hate to get off course, but oh, sure. tournaments for Salmon in Illinois, very minimal amount to get in the tournament. We have a nice lunch program at the weigh-in. Um, you get to learn a lot about the fishing, what's going on out there. We take the top three boats, um, and they all talk about their presentations and where they fished at and how they got it done that day. That's one mandatory thing. And it's very reasonable to get in. It's like $40, and that $40 gets you a, a whole meal for your whole team also. Nice. So um, in all the years that you've been on the water fishing, and, and uh, as it relates to the tournament side of things, what are some of the most memorable experiences that come to mind? Was there a crazy catch at the last minute? Was there a uh, giant, yeah. you know, what, what were some things? Or even some blunders. I think the the biggest the biggest uh, high point in my career uh, tournament fishing was the past the passion. Uh, we came out of uh, Waukegan, headed in Waukegan that year, and I grew up in Waukegan, and I fished out of Waukegan my whole life. And I told several people, I told them, I said, if I don't win the past the passion out of Waukegan, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done fishing tournaments. So we came out of Waukegan, and there was a uh, we had all in purposes we were heading to the point win point we were going to come walk Egan all the way to win point normally not a lot of tournaments get one up in that area there's a lot of structure up there holds fish big fish uh we were going to go to win point which was a big run from walk Egan up there. That was a big and run for people that might not know i mean some people might not that's in racine yeah it's in racine and it's North, probably yeah. a you know it's a good one hour run to mm -hmm. get up there you know so i mean it was part of your big part of your fishing time would be on the run yeah and uh we pulled out i was pointing that direction and a fog bank came in while we're waiting for the shotgun to start. And I mean, it just came in like crazy. And I told the guys, you know what, man? We are not going to go through all the mirage of boats coming out of Winthrop Harbor, coming out of Kenosha. Every harbor. Two yeah. Big, yeah, all these harbors. We're going to be coming through that maze. It's going to take our one-hour trip and turn into two hours getting up there trying to come through that maze. I said, you know what? We're going to go to the R4. I've had some great fishing down there in June. It, which this is a point or a, a reef, you could say, uh, down between Evanston and Chicago. About the same amount of travel time, but no harbors to be involved in, no traffic. Yeah. I said, let's go down there. We burn down there, and the first rod goes off, 15-pound trout. We don't even get the second rod, another 15-pound trout. All right, we got our <laughs> trout. We got, uh, we're on them. So we make a turn. I go, you know, we're going to run down the side of the reef, and we're going to troll back up. I've had some good success catching some brown trouts down there. We weren't there five minutes. We had four Chinooks in the boat. Wow. I'm like, dude, we are in. So we had our 10 fish. We had a nice weigh-in. That tournament, a brown trout or a grand slam got you extra points. We had steelhead. We had our coho. We had our kings. We had our trout. We went down in front of the lake forest. We weren't fishing 15 minutes, and the lead core goes off, brown trout. <laughs> so we came in. We were in first place first day. We were like high five, and it was a great day. So we took off and went back down there, and the whole fleet followed us down to the R4. <laughs> I mean, there was... Now, uh, now, now, explain to us how they knew. Was it yeah, because the word well, got out quick well, that you were there? Yeah, you know, you know I'm a, I don't mind telling people where I'm fishing. Yeah. You still had to catch a fish. True. You know, yeah. I've had so many people, and we're on them. They come over by you, and they can't catch two fish. And they're watching this net fish after fish. And I've done the same thing for those people. We're on them. We run over there. We can't catch a fish. I could tell you where the fish are at. I could tell you about how where, where, what depths are at. It's up, still up to you and your boat and your team to catch those fish. So I have no problem 
telling people where I'm going fishing. And sometimes it bites me in the butt, you know, but mm. I'm that kind of guy. I, I, I love to see other people excel in this because they're never going to come back if you don't. If you don't help guys, they're never going to come back. Well, Jaws on, that guy always catches. I can't compete against him. And that's kind of why I got off the Jaws on boat for the SU club tournaments. We were doing so well that people started, you know what, I can't fish against that guy. So I jumped off and I got on other people's boat. Found out it wasn't just the boat, you know. It was the getting good teams together and getting things like that together. But the second day of the Pass to Passion tournament, we went back down there and the whole fleet of boat was down there this time. So, <laughs> <laughs> and the fast boats were already, when we pulled up, they were already netting fish. Like, oh. So we ran by them. We just got out of the crowd. I said, you know what, we're going to go farther south. We ran by them about a mile. There was nobody down there. First five fish were toads, every one of them. We packed up. We went back. We went brown trout fishing. We had all our species. We had a nice catch. Five minutes left. We had to take off. Boys, we got five minutes. because It's a 45, 50-minute run back at the, where we were at. And uh, Rod goes off. We reel it in. We're like, oh, my God, it's brown. It's jumping around. 10-pound sheep head. <laughs> <laughs> you talk about a guy just sinking low. Uh, that tournament's not communication tournaments. You don't know what's going on. You can't tell what your buddy's doing. You can't tell. So we figured, oh, man, we're in trouble. And we went, and sure enough, we had enough to get it going, and we won that pass to passion. And we won about $10,000 in that tournament. So that was a very that was one of my highest point of my career was definitely that tournament. The low point of tournament. Yes, because we've got to be fair here, right? There's... <laughs> we were in the Morris Tournament, and uh, back in the days when they had the Morris Tournaments before the Pass to Passion, uh, we came in, we had a great catch. I let my crew take the cooler up. We get up there, and they go, Jim, we messed up. I go, what happened? He goes, we only waited nine fish. We cleaned the other ones. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And we had it. But they cleaned, they cleaned the fish and didn't count the fish properly. So that was definitely the low point. After that, the captain, I don't care who you are, you count those fish before that cooler leaves the boat. Because at the end of the day, you were the laughing stock of the tournament. Wow. And, and I know, that's I know, happened, and I, that's happened more than multiple one. Multiple yeah, times, yeah. yeah. And you know, you hear about other things, oh, that'll never happen to me. Yeah. It will never <laughs> happen to me again. I can tell you that. <laughs> I can't imagine. I know. I I know. Jim's given us the very uh, PC friendly version of that because yeah. I can't imagine <laughs> what you were saying. You uh, know, you uh, talk about heads down, man. I mean, it's like, oh no. I'm the. Hey, I tell you, you feel about this big at the end of the day, you know, because you know the whole fleet's talking about you about this time, you know, and and all you gotta do, man, is pick your head back up and wait for next weekend because there's another one coming, and you gotta get your team, rally your team back up, and uh, get back at it. And yeah. we did, and we did. We went back out and had an excellent year the rest of the season. But so, so let's talk about when you're when you're tournament fishing. Um, if if you can share your general, there's the phone. We don't need that. Could you share your general um, setup and spreads? Sure. I mean, uh, I'm the kind of guy. That even when I go pre fishing, I do run leads on one side and coppers on the other side, right out of the box. Okay. Uh, because let the fish tell you what. A lot of times they'll bite the leads. They won't bite a copper. Other times they'll bite the coppers, but they won't bite the leads. And I'm the same way come tournament day. Obviously, when we're pre-fishing the day before or the evening before the tournament, let's say we can't get out there that morning, we still will try to get a splash of lures in the afternoon or something, maybe for an hour or two, even though it's a whole different fishery, you know, 5 o'clock at night to 5 a.m. in the morning. Mm -hmm. um, I take my – we always run leads and coppers, but we'll always run wire divers. You know, wire divers are always your meat haulers. Those guys – if you ain't running wire divers during a tournament, you're probably not going to be a, excel yourself up there. But your wire divers will always bring in the meat. And I mean, with bigger trout, the bigger kings, bigger coal holes, uh, they're always seen they bring in the bigger fish, the wire divers. Um, but we always run two wire divers. I run three riggers, uh, starting to go that stealthier mode. You know, in the old days, everybody used to run five riggers and stuff like that. And you'll see a lot of boats today with three riggers. We love to run the three rigger program, especially one down the chute, which is your probably your number one producing rod um, when it comes to that kind of things. But uh, wire divers and then uh, leads and coppers and then de decipher what you want to run at the day. With those three riggers, um, where are they at depth wise? Were Normally, you... that center rigger is the deepest one. Okay. We run that the deepest. Most of the time, we run the deepest. A lot of times, so if you're, you know, if you're bringing fish up and you see another fish dart off of it, I will bring that center rigger up into that realm because 
a lot of times you're bringing fish up and all of a sudden the center rear goes off. Well, it wasn't a fluke. He was following the other fish up and he seen that bait and he went after that one. So that's another thing too is uh, diversity. Yeah. You know, keeping that stuff up in there. But uh, mostly coppers and, and leads will tell you what's going on out there mostly today in today's world. Is, what is, And you said the, your dipsies are number one producing? Absolutely. Generally? For yeah. bigger fish. You know, uh, today... We're fishing a lot of trout. You know, if you got to go catch your lake trout, you can go to any tournament you want to go. If you ain't got four nice trout in the box on a 10, 10 limit uh, tournament, if you ain't got four nice trout in the box, you're not going to do very well in that tournament. And what are we talking about as far as an average weight for those four trout? What are we? What, 10 what, pounds. So I at least about 10, 10 pounds. pounds. Yeah, you got to have, obviously bigger than that, but if it's under 10, we're throwing it back. We're yeah. not keeping it. You know, we're going to throw it back. That, that And, you know, that's an interesting thing because – I mean, we, we tend to see it on social media and stuff where, um, you know, folks don't exactly give Lake Trout the uh, best kind of rap. And, you know, Rob and I both say, hey, I'd rather catch some fish than nothing. Yeah. And if Lake Trout in there and they're biting, why not? You know, and in the tournament world, you better have those. Well, things. right. And, and so what I was getting at is that folks that are ignoring them. Yeah. And if you do intend to get into tournament fishing, you're at a disadvantage already. You, you have better, to learn you better just to, start to catch. And don't we? I tell people when you go out there, don't worry about catching 50 fish. Try to catch quality fish. Mm -hmm. You know, 50 fish ain't gonna win tournaments. When I first started fishing the SU Club tournaments, uh, I was out of Waukegan. I had a boat in uh, in uh, Larson Marine in, uh, in out service over there. I was there for 15 years. Loved it, but. Uh, we would catch 30, 40 fish, and we'd come up to these two. Oh, we got it. How many fish you get? 12. Well, we got 40 today. The fishing is better down south, Waukegan South, but they're smaller. When I moved to North Point, we were boat of the year three years, first three years in a row because we were fishing up in the structure. We were fishing where the bigger bait was in my book and the bigger fish was. Those guys could catch less fish up there, but they're quality fish, not like they are more south. Quantity down there. But the nursery is more down, more down. South. Yeah, it seems like that, right? Because yeah. uh, uh, like out of Chicago, you have a lot of. Mm -hmm. They said it's like a haven for lake trout just because mm -hmm. of the breeding. Yeah. And so a lot of the juvenile fish might probably stay yeah. there until they get big enough to venture off. Maybe. Yeah, I think the juveniles stay behind as the the bigger fish, the breeders, they move up the lake, and the juveniles they don't care where they're going. They just kind of goof around. They just sit back there a little bit, a little bit less, and the warm water actually pushes them out finally. But the big ones, they leave like the smelt or the alewives mm -hmm. and their bait fish. Mm -hmm. They're already up the lake. And so they go looking for them. You know? Now that we're seeing uh, five fish tournaments instead of tens, yeah. how is that changing your strategy out there? Well, it does change your strategy a little bit, but not too much. You know, we're still trying to, but we're still trying to get, it's a little easier for some of us, you know. And I think it's going to help. I love to see the five fish like the Jackpot Challenge Series this year that SU Wisconsin's putting together. Um, I love when I heard the five fish limit, I go, oh, that's fantastic. We're going to get more boats in it. No doubt about it. No could, doubt about it. Could you explain the difference and and why exactly you feel that's better for, for it? So well, people are clear, your, you know, the smaller boats, um, you know, you got your, you, you always got your predecessors or you got your hog gone, your stormtrooper, your Phoenix, your rainmaker, you know, the jaws on Seamate. Those guys are always up there, but they know how to catch big 10 fish. We bring it down to five. I was talking to Jim Mueller about a week ago. He was said, it's going to shoot me a little bit down, only having five fish, because a lot of guys can catch five fish, but a lot of quality fish, but a lot of guys can't catch 10 quality fish. So, so the idea is that it, it kind of narrows that gap and, and yeah, we're it equalizes so. a little bit more. Absolutely. The we're hoping so. The yeah. point systems worked with a lot of tournaments. Catching 10 fish in general is like the first step. You have to have your... 10. Your ten fish to because get those it's ten points, points per per fish. So that's yep. hundred points right out of the box. Yeah, and that was always you know almost regardless of size. You had to have yeah. your ten ten fish, and if you couldn't get that, then you didn't have much of a chance. Got it. Yeah. So now if there's only five, and you can really just concentrate on size, then yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, that does sound good. I I I love the format. I'm excited about the format. And I really can't wait to get into this format. It makes sense why now is a good time for for newer guys that are have been yeah. teetering with the idea of jumping in to do it because it's it seems like it's a little bit less pressure. Absolutely. In that regard, you know. You know how many times you've been out there and you couldn't catch five fish? I had a hard time catching ten fish, but you know how many times you've been out there and you mm -hmm. couldn't catch five fish? You know, so I think in that aspect, we're going to see a lot more boats. You know, yeah. obviously in the last 
five years, our boats count has, has just shrunk in the tournaments. No yeah, and this lot. way, it's, you don't need to have a team to rely on quite as much. It's Absolutely. a lot easier just to get – I mean, you could go – technically, you could go fish a tournament by yourself. By yourself. You know. Yes, you could definitely do that. But you, but you know, could two-man it for sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Two-man, now you've got two-man and stuff. You know, when we're fishing these big tournaments like that, we have at least four guys in the tournament, you know, on the boat. But uh, two people is awesome. I'd rather have two people on the boat. I, I like reeling and fish. I like to, mm-hmm. you know, when you have five people on the boat, oh, geez, I didn't get to reel that one. And that guy hogged the pole up over there. But I like reeling the fishing. I like setting the lures up. When you've got a bunch of people together, it's a little tough for to, to maintain. Everyone's trying to, yeah, yeah. That, that cycle. Yeah. Um, going back to, to your spread, I wanted to touch on um, – some of your go-to setups and lures, things well, that the, the things that you're willing to share. If yeah, there's no things kidding. that you that you might well, want to keep close to the chest, but it's understandable. If we but, go back to the wire divers, it's always dodger fly combinations. Always dodger fly combinations. Um, I can start talking a little bit about the lake trout, how we've been fishing those lately, because I think lake trout is your most important yeah. fish you can catch for the tournament. You know, and when we're fishing at 100 feet or less, we're dragging those dipsies on the bottom. Really? Oh, absolutely. I mean, that pole is bouncing the whole time. Um, and sometimes uh, uh, a good fisherman uh, went out fishing with um, Jim LaFortune. He runs Salmon Arama up in uh, Wisconsin. Great fisherman, just a great fisherman. I was fortunate enough to have him with, have me for a few tournaments, and he showed me some really cool lake trout tactics about bouncing that bottom like that. You know, you don't – you go out and you try these tactics in yourself, but you can't really – precise until you really have somebody on the boat that knows what the heck they're doing and let you know yeah and jim lafortune came out with me one time and i'll tell you we put a lake trout pattern together that day that was unbelievable and i've taken that excelled it and when i'm saying i sell that i had i was running my dipsies we weren't attaching the bottom we were bouncing down under balls and i told him i says i can outfish you on my side of the boat to your dipsy diver we went out there never stood a chance that guy was pounding him one we were reeling his pulling in more times than we reeled my downrigger in so, but he showed me that sometimes just running that lure, the, the dodger and fly, eight feet, 10 feet, he's running at 40 feet off the dipsy. Hell, I, we hand wound him up. I never done that in my life. Once we started doing that, guess what? We started pounding the fish, running the deep. Now, not every day you have to do that. And some days they want it shorter. So we, I have my boat. I have five different types, uh, 10 foot, 20, 30, 40, 50 foot leaders. We have them on uh, the little pool things. Uh, the pool, pool noodles? Pool noodles, yeah. We mm-hmm. wrap them on there, and I have it written on there what they are. And, but, and, this, uh, and this is not a slide diver. This is just an actual dipsy. This is your... divers, those uh, the 107. The deeper divers. The 127. 124. 124, yeah, 124, yeah, 124 the deeper divers. And the, the, the prism one seems to work the best for us, the clear or the prism one. Mm-hmm. And uh, you take that sucker and you tighten it up as tight as you can get it. It will release. But if you don't, it's going to release all the time by hitting the bottom like that. But you just take that sucker and crank that sucker up, and it will release when the fish is on it, but it won't release when you're bouncing the bottom with it. But that's a number one tool for me. Now, if we're fishing greater than 100 feet, I know, I, I know some guys can run them deeper than 100 feet, but... Over 100 feet, you got to have so much line out on the yeah. thing. You know, when we're fishing 100 feet, we're running about 220 out, which is not unreasonable, you know, when you're reeling in the fish. But when you get out to the 140, 150, 170, 180, you're out five, 600 feet on it. That ain't no fun to me, man. I, I, you know, that's, reeling in these 600, 700 coppers, that ain't no fun to no. me. No. There's <laughs> other <laughs> tactics to get away by not having to do that, yeah. you know. But, uh, the hundred foot seems to be the the the, clear, the, the, the spot, and uh, like I said, about two forty out on your wire diver it seems to be doing that. But diversify with that length of leader, which Jim showed me that. You got it just because they're not catching them eight foot. You start to take leave one of your regular ones out, on the other side start stretching it off. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, get my other leader out, stick that one on there, and then the downer ball still bouncing. The downer ball does not hurt. Um, I fished with a guy about oh maybe ten years ago, and he he had it figured out. He thought he had a chain. It was about a six foot chain, and he he ran that as the downrigger ball, and that chain just tore up the crap down there. And we caught some fish with it, but I don't think a guy needs to go to that level. But it was a different type of fishing for sure. I mean, a log chain for a downrigger ball? Okay, I'll give it a try. Yeah. But the downrigger ball seemed to work just as good as the chain did that day. So. Inside of a hundred, you're, you're you're bouncing dipsies, and are you 
bouncing the downrigger ball? Is it- so I run the Dipsy's bounce, and then my center rigger will be dra- also bouncing the downrigger ball. A little bit. Yeah. Gotcha. Or a little bit higher in a little bit of cleaner water, you know. But uh, most of the time, it's bouncing. It's bouncing. Gotcha. Yeah. And, and you said that's with a, a Dodger fly, correct? Dodger fly. Any specific one? You know, call me what you want, but I'm still that smoke trash can Dodger. Okay. The one that's $150 a day, if you could find one. <laughs> <laughs> I was fortunate enough to stockpile them up. I was looking at my count the other day. I still have seven. <laughs> but uh, the trash can Dodger was always has been a good Dodger for me. Um, some guys that uh, have, have come into the tournaments that late, uh, Arnie was talking about it here recently. He uses a chrome spin doctor, um, and I think that came from the other side of the lake. Those guys use a lot of the spin doctors over there yeah. on their trout. Um, I still haven't went to that level because I still have my tried and trues. You know, um, There's a lot of great flies out there for it. There is a fly from Firefly that we put on the boat. It's called the Jaws fly. It's a fly that uh, we put on the boat. We... Um, he fished with us for a couple of years in the tournaments. We went through with some flies and stuff, and that thing seemed to always, uh, it's a small green spin and glow with a white skirt. Um, the other skirts that we that I absolutely love is just a straight uh, little boy blue skirt, half yeah. skirt, half cut, mm-hmm. and or the white with a little boy blue in it. That's the tried and true ones. I mean, that's the green uh, spin and glow or the white spin and glow in those flies. That's... You don't, the money. Need, you don't need 40 different flies and spinning glows and Dodgers for them. There's only a couple that I really like, and that's some of the ones I really like. When we, when we talk about uh, on, on your on your boards, you're running lead on one side, copper on the other. Can we talk about what's on those lines typically? So, you know, if, we're, if, we're turning, if I'm just going out fun fishing, I don't run the Dodgers and flies on them. But when we're tournament fishing, we're getting more and more to the Dodgers and flies on our coppers and, and leads. They are really starting to get more and more fish on our Dodgers and fly combinations out there. But I'm a big moonshine guy. I mean, I love moonshine spoons. I mean, I, if you went to my boat, I probably have 500 moonshine spoons. I really like moonshine. Um, and I like the Stinger program, too. We'd run a lot of Stinger programs, too. Any uh, particulars that, that come to mind that are some of the ones you'll go to? Uh, I, I, I always start out with a night crawler. Uh, the Bad Toad uh, moonshine is really a good lure. Um, that's probably the number one. I like the bad toad with the RV tape on mm-hmm. it. That's mm-hmm. probably my number one in the morning for the Kings. Um, Nightcrawler, like I said. Uh, oh, there's there's several that come to mind. Yeah. But uh, any of those brown patterns, I, that's the ones I like. You know, I, like the, I like the green. I like the white. I always like the brown patterns. I think the lake is going to the Gobi side of the world, you know. Mm-hmm. And it's more of a brown. I like the brown, more brown pattern stuff. That's interesting. I mean, that's the first time I've heard like browns. Yeah. Um, I, I've noticed that you 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 you're talking about a lot more Dodger flies and not as many flashers. Is that correct? Yeah. Um, I, I like the Stinger program, the Stinger Dodgers, more than anything. Um, and once again, we're starting to figure starting to figure out a few things too on that. We're running the flies a little longer these days. You mm-hmm. know, a lot of guys run the twenty three to twenty five, and uh, don't get away by running thirty six to forty five inch long leaders on these flies. I mean, sometimes these fish are lazy and they want it lazy looking back there, and they're they're going to grab it. So even though you're, I have some really super duper long extension leaders that we do we use, and uh, and the fluorocarbon. I mean, the fluorocarbon. I I can't explain it enough that the fluorocarbon is the way to go. I mean, I go out there fishing all the time, and people always say, oh, yeah, oh, I'm just fishing with mono. Try fluorocarbon. Oh, that stuff. Fluorocarbon. Fluorocarbon, fluorocarbon, fluor. I have turned moderate fishermen to unbelievable fishermen just by changing their mindset on fluorocarbon. Yeah, I'm big on fluor as well yeah. for a lot of reasons. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, that, that's, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool, you know, the hearing a lot of Dodger flies, uh, spoons in, in the setups here. Um, and, uh, I'm trying to think about, are you using 40 or 50 pound fluoro on your fly leaders? 50, 50. I do 50 pound test mm-hmm. on my, on my leaders. Every one of them. Yeah, absolutely. It's fluorocarbon. They can't see it. Right. Mm-hmm. But 50 oh. pound. And you get that abrasion and it's yeah. thick and yeah. it's going to whip that pound. fly around. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, for you, what were some of the, those key moments throughout your career that, that really reshaped your, your mindset and how you fish, whether it things that you're out there and it just hits you like man i gotta switch this up or when i started fishing with team seamate who's I, who i fish with these days i think i'll be the this will be my third year on the boat full time yeah i think it's my third year 
Those guys' mindset is totally different than anything or anybody I ever fished with. They are fishermen. And I mean, these guys can actually catch fish. And it's really cool to go out with people that have the same intensified program that you have. We have meetings the night before. We have a meeting during the week, uh, Zoom meetings and stuff like that. I mean, it's, it's, it's basically hardcore. It's hardcore. it's hardcore. And that's why Team Seamate has done so well in the last few years. Not just because I'm on the boat. We excelled the program because we have put a lot of great fishermen on there. We won a lot of tournaments again last year. We won a lot of tournaments the year before. We uh, we did very well last year. We won the Southwest Challenge Series again last year. Uh, it's just because though they, they excel, you know. We're not just weekend warriors. We talk, we think, salmon. That's all we do all summer long. You know, those guys are phenomenal to fish with. Great, great team. Ted, the captain, uh, his mindset is just unbelievable. He, we can catch a fish, he'll mark something down. He'll mark something down. He'll mark something down. You go up and look at his notes. Oh, wow, I didn't know he had all that stuff. The next day he'll come <laughs> out and go, well, we caught this one here. We caught this one here. We caught this one here. You know, I never did something like that. But. I was just about to say, how, how important is some type of logging in a, any of this? You know, what's pretty cool about uh, different loggings, and I think the number one thing about logging is directions. You know, it's always the, the direction that you're going. You know, when you ask a guy, hey, where are you catching your fish? I'm catching 80 feet. What direction? 320 degrees. Perfect. Thank you very much. That's the number one thing you need to ask a guy. Depth and what what angle he's at. Angle is number one thing out there these days for me. And I guarantee you, try to talk to the top dogs out there. They're going to tell you the same thing. It's angle. What angle? And Ted is really anal about that thing. He writes the angles down, what directions we were going. That. Angle and the speed. Mm -hmm. and depth. Yeah. That is huge because a lot of that is because of the current. Yeah. And so that angle where you're going yeah. uh, means that for whatever that day and that current was, that angle was the right way yeah. to approach the fish yeah. and get that in front of them. And, and, and to be bit. specific about it, don't just say north. Yeah, north. Like, hey, right. What is your angle? The yeah. actual, yeah. 323 degrees. Thank mm -hmm. you very much. Right. <laughs> so so for, for those of you, you know, not, not everyone – um. And I, I keep telling Rob, we need to do something based on electronics. And it's it's kind of hard in the sense that there's a variety of brands. But I think maybe we could work on something that uh, speaks on stuff that's common to across them. But, you know, on your on your chart plotter, you can have these these uh, on your compass and all that stuff. You can set it up where they have the little stuff on the side and they'll tell you. So when you catch a fish, you see all oh, heading in this this degree or if you have an autopilot system, it'll tell you. Yeah. But this is what they're talking about. And and if you don't have a big boat with all the all of that stuff, your your most common uh, fish finders these days have that basic basic functionality. that will tell yeah. you your course heading and course just heading. log yeah. that. Mm -hmm. you know? It's a lot easier if, to, if you have an autopilot. For sure. Actually, yeah, like, absolutely. For sure. yeah. But the small guys can do it too. You put yeah. your trolling motor in the water, you can hit a, a setting, a heading, and and you can figure it out just like the big boats. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It gets you it gets you in the in the uh in the ballpark for sure. Um let's talk about the current state of, of the um tournament fishing here in, in the area or or you know, I guess in general I would say, uh for salmon. Where where are things at in terms of involvement and uh numbers uh in that regard and what can be done to encourage folks to to get involved sure well you know we're gonna start out going to the clubs i mean we need more people in the clubs no doubt about it we have a lot of you know as, as su illinois which i'm a big part of su illinois have been for a long time i was a vice president there for a long time i'm a board member now thinking about stepping back up the the ladder a little deeper here trying to help it out i retired this year so i have a little more time on my hands Correct. to help out yeah um in our in our su illinois club uh we used to have you know in the day back in the 70s there was three thousand members they used to have two uh, two meetings a month by by uh bi-weekly a month two every two weeks they had a, uh, they had one down in chicago and then they had one up north because there was so many people we're down to 270 people in su illinois now that's our club uh tally right now we were just at the meeting the other night so for all these people just get in the club it's 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 not a million dollars you know i mean it's forty dollars you get in the club you get the hook and line you get information you come to the meetings uh we do have some things going on now we have some people to work with we have always the su illinois it's always the same five people that do everything thank god we have those five people otherwise here we'd be in really trouble 
SU Wisconsin's doing a lot of great things these days, um, too. Uh, like SU Illinois, we did the cleaning station down there. We helped with that. We built a pavilion down there for people to use. We're getting ready to, uh, SU Illinois is getting ready to uh, redo the boards on the cleaning station here at North Point. Uh, we're taking the wooden boards out. We're going to put some new uh, that uh, PVC stuff on there. So we're getting ready to do all that here in the next couple of weeks. That's probably going to start happening. Um, SU Wisconsin does a lot of great things, too. I um, mean, uh, Jim LaFortune and their crew up there, the new club president, Chris, they've been doing a lot of good stuff up there. I heard they're doing something with the cleaning station up there at the uh, boat launch. Um, they put a buoy in up there. Um, yeah, we, that's they, really cool, actually. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they do a lot of things. The clubs do a lot of things more than just uh, have meetings. There's yeah. uh, things going on. And I, I think that's important to, to, to really uh, mention uh, in detail is it's – you think of the club, you think about the fishing aspect, but there's a lot of stuff that all these clubs are doing to give back. They're co-oping with D, uh, DNR. They're co-oping with universities. Like you mentioned, the the um, uh, SU in Wisconsin is doing the uh, buoy out there that's going to yeah. give uh, depth. Uh, what is it again? They're going to do It's going to be Fred. temps and yeah. wave currents. Like It's really yep. cool. Yeah. Right out of Racine, right? It's the same thing, the same buoy they have up in Milwaukee, mm -hmm. up there off that beach up there. You know the name of that beach up there? The Atwater Beach. At so, water yeah, beach I think buoy, that yeah. their Atwater bolt, like, that's every five feet, you get yeah. a temperature reading. Uh, and, and, and I think a current. down to the bottom. Yeah, yep. cool. yeah. So, you know, they're, these these groups and these orgs are are doing more. So, so you know, I, if you for the folks that talk about the state of the lake and what can be done, this is a great opportunity to get involved with these groups because they're uh, actively working with all the other agencies and groups and harbors and all these things to to uh, keep the fishery up the way we want it. To we want it to be yeah, exactly. You know? you know, the clubs play a big part, not just yeah. pavilions and stuff, but the actual it's fishery. Like, yeah. like the cohos, when you catch them, ninety. I would say ninety percent of, but a big percent of is. It's SU Illinois, we take about 40 people a year, and we go down to Jack Wolf Fishery down there, and we clip 250,000 coal. They either clip the adipost or the fins on the front or whatever mm -hmm. it may be. They'll tell us which fins to do. Um, things like that, and that helps that DNR to tell what to return to these fish in, where they're going. You know, it's funny when you catch a lake trout, oh, the fin's gone. Well, how do you think that fin was gone? He was clipped off manually. All the king salmon, they'll run through a machine. I don't know if you knew that or not. No. All the king salmon, they have a machine that runs through, and that machine goes on, clicks through, adipose fin off, and puts that thing in between their eyeballs. All the king salmon that get introduced in the lake go through a machine, and they do what? A couple hundred thousand a day they can do with that machine. Mm -hmm. that, I didn't know that. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty cool. That's a nice cool little We fun used to fact. do that all manually. But about uh, probably about four years ago now, I think the machine came out. So the DNR, we don't have to clip those no more. Well, that, that helps for band power purposes. Also, I can't imagine handling the fish also doesn't, you know, there's a opportunity for them to not handle that well. And, and Well, I tell you, it's uh, two seconds here real quick. It's pretty cool. They got these big tanks, and they take the fish out with a the net. They're you know, about three inches, maybe four inches long. And they put them in these little tubs, and there's a liquid in there that stuns the fish. Uh. They roll over, look like they're all dead. You pick him up, you clip him. Now you throw it back into this saltwater brine. He comes back to life, and off he swims back off again. That's pretty cool. I mean, so if you're not grabbing a fish and he's jumping all over. He's gotcha, like gotcha. dead in your hand. I figured that. Yeah, I, you know, it's, it's really, a, really cool. I don't know if you've ever done it. Um, if you ever wanted to do it, contact the club. We'd love to have you come down and do it. It's it's a lot of fun. Great time. Bring the kids to experience that. Too, it is really, say. really, it's really a neat project. So, um. If, if membership goes up substantially and, and whatnot, um, would there be opportunities for the club to uh, work with uh, Illinois and the states for matters of, say, stocking and things like that in Illinois, which is very, yes. uh, very, I guess, a knock that that all of the Illinois side of, of anglers kind of experience is that uh, I think Bowman put out a story last year and they did some. It was something to the effect that it takes something like, God, I'm gonna misquote it, but it was something like forty to sixty hours to catch a king down in like Chicago, for instance. You know, they oh. have to put on the water. <laughs> it was it was something Ooh. like it was something to that effect. Yeah. And and I mentioned it again to to speak to um, the Illinois side of things. It, so again, if SU uh, got the the numbers, because any group that amasses a certain amount of numbers, you have leverage. You have the leverage to then exactly. make your voice heard. Yeah. We do have meetings uh, 
usually once a year with the DNR program, uh, SU Illinois, so does Wisconsin, they do the same thing. We have meetings with them and we talk about the stocking programs and what you can do more, what you can do less. Of course, they don't listen to anything they say, but at least we feel we're doing something. <laughs> and maybe they are taking some of our information to heart, you know? But if we didn't have the numbers of people saying, hey, we got 500 people buying your salmon stamp, you better listen to what we're saying a little bit. You know, now we're starting, the clubs are starting to dwindle. I know SC Wisconsin's clubs dwindling. They're trying to do a few things to get their um, stuff back up by having what they call that jackpot challenge series this year. They're trying to bring their club membership back up, which is fantastic because they've been struggling for a long time now. And I think that's going to help those guys out quite a bit. There's a big buzz about that tournament this year. Um, I think that's going to help them back out. Sadly, we're going to lose one of our tournaments this year for SC Illinois. We're going to lose the pass to passion this year. We're not going to have it. Uh, We've lost money in the last couple of years. Uh, we decided to postpone it this year and work on trying to get some better sponsorship. And that's uh, one big thing is obvious sponsorship. The club can only support so much of the money, you know. And if you don't have a good payout for a tournament, you don't have a lot of participation for it. You know, today gas is not a dollar a gallon, you know. So we, back in the day, we used to have tournaments that they would start in Chicago, they go to Waukegan, they come to North Point, we'd rent, we'd all the way to Port Washington, we'd go. But we can't have those big tournaments like that anymore, you know, because I can't leave Waukegan and drive my boat all the way to Port Washington or vice versa. Those guys are going to come down here. Sponsorship's what it's all about. And when you have $10,000 purses, you will get boats from other harbors to come in. Yeah. And that's why I think when the Pass to Passion, the last few years we started it, we actually went to the Triport, uh, the Triport Challenge where you can go out of any of those ports. You just had to come back to North Point to weigh in. Wow. And it was going okay. We just... It was just tough. We don't have a lot of people to help put the program together this year, so we decided not to have it this year. We're just going to do it for one year. We're going to kick back on it one year. Hopefully next year we're going to get sponsorship back up on it, and hopefully next year we can bring it back bigger, bolder than, than it ever has been before. Is uh, When you talk about sponsorship, is, is it a challenge these days um, – to get it from companies is absolutely because so, I know salmon fish is very kind of niche. It's not like the bass world. Yeah. Which is a, it is terrible. You know, you've got cannon downriggers, which damn near every boat fishes out. You've got a cannon downer. They don't give one club a nickel on this side of the lake. All that money stays on our side of the lake. Wow. Not one club gets a nickel from cannon downriggers. Hell, right there in Racine. Them guys don't get a nickel from cannon downriggers up there either. I mean, it's just, it's just terrible. You've got Racine and I might be speaking online. You got Racine, the the the, the uh, mayor, and all those guys down there. They don't even help Sam and Arama. They charge them more money for all the things that they do down there. They put a pavilion together up there, and they're charged them to use the pavilion for Sam and Arama. You know, I mean, and things like that. How are you going to sustain when you have to pay, pay, pay for these different things? You know, I mean, it's just it's really tough. Luckily, here in Lake Michigan, we put the pavilion down here and went to Harbor. They've been working very well with the state down there who owns the property, but the, the management down there has been really nice with us, letting us use that pavilion that we, we spent about $45,000 on that pavilion down there. You, if you know where I'm talking about. Yeah, the station yeah. There, yeah, right by the launch. Yeah, we built that all by hand, uh, had really good sponsors for it, got it put together. We had a couple guys step up that uh, fished Lake Michigan their whole lives, their father did, and they had some money, and they had, actually gave us some money towards it. It was huge. We were able to use it, and we were able to use it for free, which is another. It's got, it's kind of absurd to think that you put in that work to to boost up that property and the amenities that everyone can sit yeah. there. I mean, when it's not being used, I've gone by there because you got the beach. Mm -hmm. There's a families just sitting in there mm -hmm. chilling out, and yeah. it's great. It's a great yeah. little Absolutely. little amenity, but Absolutely. that they would then turn around and charge you for something that's. Luckily, we've been doing. We've had great report with uh, with Winter Harbor yeah. and those guys that they're hey guys have at it so your deal have fun with it over there that's cool it's been awesome it's been an awesome relationship with the with the harbor master down there and with the harbor when we had our tournament up in waukegan um we just great great participation up there those guys are super nice up there free slips or even they reduced it to a dollar a foot per boat i mean thirty dollars for a night for a boat slip is awesome i mean you can't yeah. mm -hmm. you can't beat that i understand they got to generate revenue and they don't have to give things away for free but the discount was nice they let you use their facilities down there in Waukegan. Once again, great, great port to deal with. Racine, different story up there. Those guys are having problems with those guys up there, and I really wish that their mayor would get his head out of his butt and help those guys out up there. It seems like uh, 
it seems like Racine uh, seems to be more and more uh, ple- pleasure boat driven. You see a lot of sailboats. And maybe is that a yeah. conflict with that? It always seems to be like a conflict between the anglers, boaters, and the pleasure boater side. I don't of- care what harbor you're at. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to have that yeah. situation. You're yeah. going to have that situation. Mm-hmm. You know, it seems like to, in the Winter Harbor side of it, though, most of your fishing boats are or gathered in the fishing side of it, yeah. your pleasure boater, because nothing worse as a pleasure boater. He's been up to two o'clock in the morning and at five o'clock, you hear this big buzz outside your back door. Diesel's getting fired up uh-huh. and, and all the other stuff. <laughs> That's what's nice about with the Harbor. Now you go step up to went up and Racine, they're kind of scattered around the place. So yeah, you get two sailboats and then the, the big boat charter boat or not a charter boat, but a, a tournament boat pulling out of there. So there is a little bit more, you know, mixture <laughs> yeah you know a little more a little more if you situations up yeah, yeah for sure yeah. for sure um rob do you have any questions for for jen that we haven't touched on uh, we certainly touched, touched on quite a few aspects and yeah i guess I think the the main thing if you are interested in uh getting into tournaments or what's yeah, the best I mean, way if, to get started i know the club tournaments are like like su illinois down here has really good club tournaments yeah. i think that's the way to yeah, SU Illinois has six club tournaments a year. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're trying to be a rookie boat of the year or boat of the year, um, you know, once again, those tournaments are six tournaments. So they take your best five uh, tournaments and turn it into whatever you want into your boat of the year or rookie boat of the year. If you've never fished in a tournament before in SU Illinois, you can jump into those things and actually get a rookie boat of the year if you can win that. There was, I think there was two guys head to head all the way to the last tournament last uh, last year for that. And then the one guy got edged out, but... Uh, yeah, SU Illinois has got a great program for it. Uh, we got some nice information on our website. You can always reach out to me, Jim Step, on Facebook. I'd love giving information to anybody that asks questions about it. Uh, you can message to me or jump on there. Uh, once again, uh, the SU Illinois has some great club tournaments. We have a meeting once a month, first Tuesday of the month, um, or second Tuesday of the month. I don't remember which one it is, but first or second Tuesday, you, <laughs> you can jump on our website and see the calendar of dates yeah. on there and stuff. Uh, and which the website is, you want to share that now? Yeah, it's SU Illinois. Salmon Unlimited Illinois uh, website is up there. Once again, for Wisconsin, those guys got some great tournaments up there. Um, let's step back to the Illinois side of it first. So we have those club tournaments. We're going to have one big tournament this year, which is the SU Open. It's in August. Um, you do not have to be a member. Anybody can get into that tournament. Another great tournament to get into. It's out of Winthrop Harbor. Um, there's going to be a tournament out of Kenosha this year, the Kenosha Classic, run by Arnie Phoenix. He puts a nice little tournament on there. We have about 35 boat tournament. They'll have a nice little dinner afterwards over there at the boathouse. Another nice, great tournament to be out of Kenosha. Um, tournaments out of Racine this year are going to be the the SU Open. They're going to have up there. They're going to run it coincide with one of the something new tournament series this year called the Jackpot Challenge Series. It's going to be a great tournament series. That's a five fish. Uh, tournament this year they got a lot of money to be had in that tournament i believe it's six thousand dollars for the winner of the series it's only a four tournament series too so it's uh that's going to be great for those guys up there i think that's going to help them you have to be a member to be in that tournament uh the same with su illinois you have to be a member to be in the tournament all your um, members on the boat have to be in the t- uh, a member also um after that, you're going to move up to, uh, they're going to have the Salmonorama, which is another great, the Super Sweeps. And I think the best tournament, if you ever just say, hey, I want to try to get in one of these and see how I do, go to the Two in the Boat. The Two in the Boat is ran during uh, Salmonorama. The Two in the Boat is two people in a boat. I think they're going to make it five fish this year. That's what I've been, it's a, some scuttlebutt about making it five fish. Great tournament to get into. It's during Salmon and Rama. There's a lot of stuff going on around up there. They got a big tent set up up there. They got the big weigh-ins going on. They got the cooler. You can see the big fish up there that's been going on for the season. Jim LaFortune, I mentioned his name before. He's the SAR, Salmon and Rama president up there. Puts together an incredible program, um, not only for that, but uh, he has an instrumentation about the, putting together this jackpot challenge, coming up with the funds for it, um, getting sponsorship for that. So it was huge for that. Milwaukee, Brew City, which is another great tournament. They shut that off on 125 boats, um, which is, sounds like a lot of boats because most tournaments that we run here will have somewhere between 25 and 35 boats. Out there. They shut it off for like 125. Uh, last year when we were up there, I think they had 103. The year I came in second place, they shut it off on 100, they with 123 boats. A lot of small boats up there. Uh, this year, 
GLFS has put together a big program for Bruce City. They're giving away two ounces of gold this year up there. They're going to do a, a draw on the hat for all the members or all the boat numbers. They're going to pull a number and going to give an ounce of gold away. Wow. And then the winner of the tournament gets an ounce of gold on top of everything else that's going on. Wow. Out Oh, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Especially with the way the stock market is looking right now. Yeah. <laughs> but get and they're, goals. They're, and they're, they've got a lot of formats going on. You know, one thing that's been going on with these clubs these days lately through Salmon Arama and GF, GLFS, GFLS, Great Lakes Fishing, GLFS. Uh, one thing those guys have been doing up there, they've been doing these line line auctions. One thing SU Illinois has not gotten into, but I think we're going to be getting into it I was very long. just about to ask about yeah. that. The, the online auctions. These online auctions are sponsors. They're, they're doing internal sponsorships to the clubs. Uh, Jim does an unbelievable job up there for They got SU a machine. Wisconsin. Yeah, they got that like he's a, a well old machine, he's a machine. With, with that. He's, yeah, he's a machine. Um, actually, he sponsored a big, big part of our sponsorship last year for Past the Passion came from uh, Sam and Arama. Um, luckily, we didn't lose so much money that we did because we had a – problems last year generating revenue for the tournament and he stepped up and Sam and Arama and SU Wisconsin stepped up and gave us a nice donation to to help us out to offset our losses so that was really sweet from those guys but I see SU Illinois doing the same thing before too crazy long we're just trying to put that program together it takes time and it takes a person to run that operation we've been yeah. looking for that guy for a while we just haven't put our finger on the, the right guy to do that yet um, but we're trying if we can get that done that's going to help out our funding for our club as much as it has for those guys up there. You know, Great Lakes uh, in Milwaukee, they've been doing the same thing. They've been online auctions up there. They've been making a ton of money for their club. That's what's – and it's flowing back into these tournaments. You know, Bruce City, they got a big sponsorship up there this year from another guy, so they're going to be throwing a bunch of money at that tournament this year. And that's what brings people. Mm -hmm. You know, our club tournaments in Essendon, Illinois, we don't pay a lot of money out. If you if it was the right day and everything was good, you won the tournament. There's a we have a big three. Um, if even if you went out and bombed out and only caught three fish, if there were three big ones, you could win the big three, which is worth a couple hundred bucks. You can win five, six, seven hundred dollars in a day on, on our regular club tournament here in Illinois. I don't want the harbor. The right day and you caught all the right fish. But those those kinds of tournaments, when you have big money in those tournaments, that's what brings the people. Yeah. So it gets your numbers up from 25 to 35 to 45 to 55 boats. Have you guys uh, ever, to this point, uh, co-opted something where you did, like, say, a SU, Wisconsin, Illinois, uh, and you guys put on a tournament as a co-op? Has that been a thought? No, no, we haven't. But uh, we, like I said, during the Past of Passion last year, we did the Triport Challenge. We, we allowed the Wisconsin guys to get into our program. If you're a Wisconsin member, you were okay. So we tried to keep it. As long as you're a club member, yeah. you were okay to get in that tournament. And that's probably the closest we've been so far to yeah. doing it. Um, years past, SU Wisconsin, their club presidents were more tried to close-knit. They've got a new club president up there right now, and he's more open to suggestions and, and, and things up there than has been passed, which I'm sure you've heard, too. We also have a club president today that's more open to, to things, to reaching out to things and not trying to keep things close-knit to Illinois only. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, because the reason I said that is because, um, like, with brands, when, when they're approached for, obviously, money to, to do that yeah. stuff, I thought maybe if SU combined and said, give us just one big check and we'll divide it versus two separate ones coming at them, they have to pick and choose. That might be, like, a strategic way to... to um, well, you know, like I say, anything with money, it's always a tough deal. Yeah, <laughs> I know, I know, I know. It's you know, wishful it's thinking, all, it's but it's always a tough deal when it comes to the of the Almighty Dollar Bill. But hey, we're always open for suggestions. Like I said, like all both clubs, you know, the LC Illinois, Indiana used to have SU Salmon Limited in Indiana. As you know, it's disappeared. They didn't have enough help down there. Didn't have a good president to ran the thing at the time, and and things fell apart we don't want to happen to these two clubs here because it could relates back to exactly what you're talking about before when the dnr comes up hey what do you guys got to say about this our information is crucial you know yeah. when they put those hours together how many hours was down there a lot of our guys put logs together for that information and we turn those logs in you know so a lot of that information does come from the clubs and if we don't have clubs doing it then obviously we're not going to have these great tournaments, the great people that run the tournaments, and the great participation we have in the tournaments and, and having these payouts and, and putting people together. I mean, getting these groups together, I mean, the last couple, last 
couple of years because of COVID, obviously, has kind of yeah. hurt, uh, hurt it a little bit. But uh, that's going to the wayside. We're all going to group back up. And it just makes better fishermen out of us all. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're the kind of guy who goes out there and wants to catch one or two fish, God bless you. But if you're the guy who wants to go out there and fill his cooler up, you got to get involved with these guys. This is what will make that happen. You know, coming to these great meetings that they have over at Rob, the great like making an angler with the great speakers they do. Yes, that's part of it. But when you start hand, elbow to elbow with guys, it's accelerated my fishing unbelievably. Mm -hmm. I would never be sitting here even doing a podcast on being asked to come up here and do a tournament stuff if I didn't, wasn't involved with these other guys, mm -hmm. elbow to elbow, yeah. what they're doing, how they're doing it. Uh, yeah, I can speak to that. I mean, just, just you know, um, filming you guys at the weigh-in, being on the boat watching guys, yeah. that – I learned stuff that I applied at Iconic Fish, and it, yeah. it there's so much stuff that you could pick up. So absolutely what Jim is saying here is, is very valuable for, for anyone watching that uh, is on the fence. Give it a shot. Got nothing to lose. You got no, nothing to lose. You got so, even, even if you don't if, place, you're gaining by the yeah. information. Even if you bomb out. Oh, I caught one <laughs> fish. Go to the – don't put your head down. Clean your fish. Go to the weigh-ins. Have dinner with these guys. Start rubbing elbows with them. You'll see your fishing. Oh, I caught two fish this tournament. I caught five. I caught ten. Hey, we're in second place. You know what I mean? We won one. And that's how it starts to happen. We love to see the people. I love the tournaments. I love the competition. I'd love to have more people come in. Like I said, you got questions, answers. I got answers. You got questions. Reach out to me on my Facebook. You can message me, Jim Stepp. My last name's S T E double P, two P's. Uh, reach out to me. I'd be more than welcome to help you guys out, get you into the programs, answer questions, get you in the right directions to get into these tournaments. We want boats. We need more boats. And this is the only way it's going to happen if you ask questions and get involved in it. We'd love to have you guys come to these tournaments, whether it be SU Illinois, SU Wisconsin, the Milwaukee tournament. Uh, get involved. It's awesome. Absolutely. Well, Jim. Got to say, thank you so much for 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 joining us, sharing all the information, your story, the uh, uh, tips and tricks. I'm sure guys are going to probably run back to that section and replay, you know, <laughs> what the what the setups are and all that stuff. And and obviously, um, a, a big call for folks to this year, give it a shot, get involved. Um, and and I know I know we're excited here at the shop to uh, be a part of it and document some of these uh, uh, events. So yeah, you we'd know, love to have you guys back out on the boat this year. We get yeah. you out on Seamate. Yeah, get you out on the Seamate. We, would, we can definitely can want to do an on the boat one you again. Can and absolutely, see a fine oiled machine there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, you know the uh, funny part was when I was editing the uh, the video we did last year on the dude jigger. There, there was a couple parts I had to. I had to censor out, uh, courtesy of Jim. Yeah. There's a lot of intense moments. <laughs> well, we don't do so much cursing on, 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 on Team Seamate. We're <laughs> way more focused than we were on the Doo Jigger. Plus, we had a rough day that day on the Doo Jigger. That yeah, day. it was a little challenging, yeah. but it made for a good, it made for yeah. a good shoot and uh, uh, video. Yeah. Um, so we're definitely looking forward to uh, getting out there and, and, and highlighting all that stuff. And, um, uh, you know, it was great, great to have you and pick your brain and, uh, and looking forward to – seeing SU grow and, and, and all of that. Any final thoughts, Rob? No, I'm just looking forward to this year and maybe trying to fish one of the five fish uh, tournaments in my kayak. Yeah. That'd oh, awesome. are you, are you really? If I, I'm, I'm, why I've, not? Been think, I've been thinking yeah. about it. Like, I don't need to catch 10 fish. I could fish by myself. And if the conditions are right, I mean, if all the fish are out in 200 feet of water, yeah, I'm not going to, yeah. I'm not going to sit there and try and catch five brown trout in 30 feet, but, <laughs> um, <laughs> You know, if the conditions are right, I'm definitely going to join into one of those. Could I just run through these dates real quick? Yeah, absolutely. I get for time, but I'd like to just run through these dates. No, no. For people that can actually go back and look to see uh, if I can get my spectacles on here without making a spectacle of myself. There you go. Okay, so the Illinois SU Club Tournaments is going to start May 7th. We're going to have one May 7th, May 21st, June 11th, July 16th, August 6th. And August 27th is our makeup date. In case we have a blow date, uh, we do always have a makeup date. And that'd be August 27th. I mean, September 3rd, excuse me, it would be our makeup date. And that's for the SU Club tournaments. Then we have our big tournaments. June 4th is the SU Open in Wisconsin. Uh, that's uh, one of those days is also going to be the, uh, the Jackpot Challenge Series going to be on that, which we'll go back to in a minute. But uh, the SU Open will be out of Racine, Wisconsin. That's June 4th. The Kenosha Classic will be June 18th. That's out of Kenosha. Uh, July 9th will be the Super Sweepstakes. 
That's run, that's run coincided with Salmonorama. Salmonorama. Mm-hmm. That's, the first, Salmonorama, that's the first day of Salmonorama. That's the first day of Salmonorama. Uh, the next day is June 10th, July 10th, I'm sorry. We'll be two in the boat. That'll be also out of Racine. A great tournament to get in because you don't need five people. Um, it's just a great, and plus you're, it's during uh, Salmonorama. It might be worth $25,000. You just know, never know. July 30th, the cool tournament. That's it's one of my, you know, you always say, what's your favorite tournament of the year? Bruce City. Just because of the amount of people that's at that tournament it is so cool. That's July 30th. That's right out of Milwaukee. August 13th, we're going to have the SU Illinois Open. That's out of uh, North Point here. You do not have to be a club member to be in that tournament. Anybody can be in it. SU Illinois also, September 17th, we'll have the Kids Derby this year again. That's ran out of Waukegan. That's an awesome tournament to get your kids in. We usually have around 100 kids down there. We got a lot of free stuff for the kids down there. We show them how to catch fish down there off the docks. Waukegan Harbor uh, opens all the docks up to all the kids. Real good time for the kids down there. And the Kings are... Likely we, in that, you know, around the, that time, the, too. The older youths will catch some kings down there, yeah. but it's mostly gobies, which, uh, <laughs> believe it or not, we, we've had kids catch 80 and 90 gobies. Wow. Uh, and they keep running them back to the scales. We have little food scales <laughs> to big scales. That's fun. Uh, which is really fun. But the kings are in there, and their kids are more than welcome yeah. to bring a little bigger rod and fish for them. Uh, we always catch 10 or 15 of those things. They're always caught during that tournament. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Then they got the new series this year, which is really, I'm really, really excited about. SU Illinois has put on something called the Jackpot Challenge Series this year. It's ran by Andy Knapp. His name of his boat's Free Radical. Uh, not Andy Knapp, it's Andy. Andy Glass. Andy SC Glass. Wisconsin. I don't know why he keeps saying Andy Knapp. But <laughs> Andy Glass, yeah. I don't know why he keeps saying Knapp. I don't know why he keeps saying Maybe because he's nappy head. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Andy Glass, he's, he's putting a series together for these guys up there. His name of his boat's at Free Radical. But that Jackpot Challenge Series, now that's that five fish tournament series this year. It's going to be May 14th is the first one, June 4th, August 20th, and September 10th. Um, that's going to be a great series this year. Once again, the first place guy for the series is going to take away $6,000 this year. And they're going to run that second and third. And I think it's six, three, and two or something like that. But a lot of money involved in there. Now, that series, though, the Jackpot Challenge Series, they're going to have one captain's meetings where most of these tournaments, the, the club tournaments have no captain's meetings. Uh, we just get on the radio and say you're entered in the morning. And if you reach out to me, once again, I'd be more than happy to tell you how to, exactly how to do that. But the Jackpot Challenge Series is going to have one captain's meeting this year, which is going to be May 13th, the night before the first tournament. The Jackpot Challenge Series, they're going to make you pay for all four tournaments up front, which is good, too, because now you don't have to go to every captain's meeting anymore. Um, if you can't make its uh, top three of those tournaments, you don't have to make all four. It's just three tournaments so you have to make to be, to be in the, the big money at the end. So that's going to be pretty cool. But Andy Glass, which he's also on Facebook, you can reach out to him and get any information in. But, guys, there's some awesome tournaments this year. A lot of dates available to go out and try it. Please put some stuff together and come on out. And give me a call. I'll be more than happy to tell you what's going on out there. Sounds good. All right, y'all. Thank you for joining us on this episode of the Lake Michigan Angler Podcast. Uh, one thing we're going to do, uh, you know, Jim mentioned on his um, setup some some of the things he likes. We're, we'll actually link to those items that we have here in the shop. We'll check it down below in the description. Uh, throw the video like, share it with some friends uh, that you that you either you may know that want to get involved in this, and or even if they're not going to tournament fish, just in general. There's some definitely some gems in here that Jim has shared with us. Uh, we thank you for your time, uh, especially considering we had to reschedule multiple times. We're not going to talk about that. I owe him I breakfast. Think we should bring that up. Actually. No, no, no. Let's end the <laughs> let's end it right now. I may have over. I may have had things come I've been up. Kind of waiting the whole time. No, to bring no, this no. Back. Your oh. mic's getting cut off right now. Let's just say I owe we had a no call, no show last uh, week <clears throat> with our uh, podcast host and Snow Goose has been in the way. Wait, 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 wait you. You could have handled this by yourself. I, don't know. I thought we were supposed to get donuts. We didn't, what have, happened the, donuts? Yeah, we didn't I, have any equipment to do it by uh, myself. Use your phone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting out of here before they expose me anymore. Thanks again, y'all. We'll see you guys uh, hopefully next episode. I think we might have one more potentially. We'll see you guys soon. Mm -hmm. Thanks. <laughs>